I think the last time I did a foresight for this group, I was in my pajamas. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> good to be cl fully clothed today. <laughs> right. So the world has changed overnight. Many of us are in lockdown and face-to-face -face businesses have closed their doors. Religious services have moved online and networking has taken on a new face. So many business owners may be wondering, is it still a good time to be in marketing? So income could be paused or reduced. Or alternatively, you may feel like it's a bit macabre to be selling your wares during a time when some people are really struggling. Whatever your position, there is one simple truth. The rules of marketing haven't changed. As a marketing detective, I use the clue methodology to make sure my marketing is on track. But what is a marketing detective? So to answer, I'll start by explaining a little bit about myself. I'm a marketing strategist by nature. What that means is I love human beings. I love understanding how people think, how they feel, why they work the way they do. I do drive people crazy because I want to analyze everything you do. Um, and, uh, and that's born from, from quite a lot of things in my life. One of them is I worked as a bodyguard for nine years um, in my 20s uh, to pay my way through university. Um, and what they did was taught me about being aware and alert and really paying attention to all the details around you. And that's part of what I love doing. Um, so, so all of that leads to being a marketing detective, which means I will analyze every aspect of target clients and when you know about your target clients the world becomes so much easier if you know who you're talking to if you know how to talk to them um, all of marketing just becomes so much easier just becomes easier think about it as a conversation with a friend over coffee in the days when we could so noel and i went for coffee and we had a great conversation um, and it was about understanding each other. It was talking, it was sharing. Um, and so that's how I work through marketing and that's how you should think about marketing is talking to your customer. It's just a conversation, that's all it is. The problem is marketing and selling is often confused. Um, and, and marketing is just making people aware of what you have to offer. In addition, I'm an Agatha Christie fanatic. I've read every single Agatha Christie book. I've watched every movie. I have my favorite, Miss Marple. Um, and so any who done it is very high on my list, including Murder, She Wrote, you name it, I've, I've watched it. Um, so when you add all that up, you get me. Really curious and an intense need to understand the world around me. So solving the mystery unlocks the right marketing mix of message, price point, process, and medium. So what should you be doing today? So let's think about the nine simple marketing activities you can be doing to make sure your customers remember you, return to you when they have a need for your product or service. The world of marketing is a little bit different now because it's no longer a push strategy. So when I was learning marketing, we used to be taught how to push. So think about TV ads, you push your product out there and many people will see it, but somebody will go, yes, it's for me. What we're trying to convert marketing to now is a pull strategy. What that means is customers come to you when they need you. You do need to be out there. They need to see you. So know, like, and trust is really important. But when they know about you, then they like you. Then they trust you. They will buy from you, right? Has everyone heard of know, like, and trust before? It's not new? Good. <laughs> so the first thing, let's talk about what we could be doing. The first thing is please keep your profiles up to date. Whether it's your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook profile, whatever you have out there, your website, make sure it's up to date. 
I see so many people, I saw one last week, which actually hurt me a little bit, which still had a, a Christmas special on their website. It's a long time since Christmas. <laughs> um, and the reason this is important is when someone sees that, they, they will perceive, think about how you see it when you see an error, and I'm terrible about spelling mistakes and things like that. When I see it, my mind immediately assumes that the person who wrote it isn't careful, isn't meticulous, isn't going to care about me. Isn't that how you feel as well? So just making sure, you know, if you have closed down your business, and one of my clients is in a restaurant, so the first thing we did was just to go make sure all the opening hours were up to date, you know, and make sure we'll be back soon is the message we're using. Um, make sure that's up to date. Make sure your website has the right information. Take away the Christmas message. It's past. <laughs> you can store it and bring it back in December. That's, that's good. Reuse is good. But uh, it shouldn't be visible now. Phone numbers up. Email addresses, people change email addresses and don't update that. It's such, it's such a small thing, but really just go through all your, your uh, profiles and make sure they still talk to who you are. Right. The second thing we can be doing is stay visible. Now this sounds a little bit difficult, but even if you can't be selling today, even if you have to wait until we're out of this lockdown period, people need to remember you because when we come out of it, they're going to buy from the last person they remember. So this doesn't mean you need to be out there every day. It doesn't even mean you need to be spending media money if you can't afford it right now. But there are lots of free options. LinkedIn messages once a week, just to say that you're there. Stay consistent. You can send emails to your, to your customer base. Um, I'm working with a hairdresser customer right now. And we just sent an email, but he's quite quirky. We sent an email to, to his customers and he, he did a picture on himself, which says, please, whatever you do, don't cut your own bangs. Um, and it, it was just really quirky because, you know, he's going to have to fix the mess when we can all get back to the hairdresser. <laughs> Um, and I, I do know, well, some of my male friends have been shaving their heads, you know, you're like, oh, no, what are you doing? Um, so he's just doing, he did a little tip series on, um, on how to look after your own hair while, you, while you're in lockdown, you know. So is there ways you can add value to your existing customer base so they remember you, so that they know you're still there? Um, but also just stay visible. It, this will end, we will go back to some sort form of normal. I, I don't think it will be the same, but it will, we'll be allowed out of our houses at some stage. And then the customers will come back. Um, they need to remember you. And if you're not doing it, guys, somebody else is talking to them. If it's not you, it's somebody. And they can remember that somebody. So rather be you. If you are still operating today, fantastic. Stay visible. Make sure they see you, make sure you're out there. And as I said, it doesn't need to be expensive. There's really ways of being visible without spending media spend. Right, the third thing um, is stay positive. Now this is quite interesting to me, but nobody likes doom and gloom. I'm not sure about you, but I'm actually coveted out. <laughs> I, um, I've switched off from the news. Um, I get I get the, that from my husband now. He tells me the bad news. It's, it just becomes overwhelming for me. Um, and especially when I hear some people say, oh, we're going to be stuck here till December. That's too much for me. to. T I'm like, no, let's stick to each deadline. That keeps me going. I need positivity. But your customers and the people that are looking at you are exactly the same. So again, as I said about the restaurant clients, instead of saying closed due to COVID, as the message, we said we will be back soon. Can you hear the slight emotional difference in those messages? Um, and really, if you're positive, 
you draw more people to you. I'm going to use Ellie as an example. Ellie always has the most amazing positive energy. Um, and in a face-to-face -face environment, it's even more attractive. But it means we're all drawn to you, Ellie, because you're, you're just exuding all that positive energy. And it's the same with our marketing messages, guys, is exude the positive energy. Make sure your messages are phrased positively. Um, there's two companies in South Africa. Sorry for those who don't know me, South African accent, um, but I live here now. <laughs> so there's two companies in South Africa that I admired. And through this crisis, one of them has gone up in my esteem and one has gone down. The one that's gone up in my esteem is Nando's. So there are Nando's here. I've, I've taken my kids there to experience some South African Nando's. But um, when Nando's had to close down, because South Africa is also in lockdown, they published the, and their CEO published this really beautiful um, video series talking about how the lockdown was there to protect their staff and their clients. That they were doing, you know, that yes, it was hard. And, and the whole message was so positive around, we'll be back stronger than ever before. And we can't wait to be frying you some more chicken. I mean, it was really very positive. Another company, which I probably should have named, but they went out going, oh dear, we have to close our stores. We're going to be out of income. This is going to be the hardest year of our lives. But guys, it's the government's fault. They're making us do this. It was just, what a horrid message. It just made me feel, I mean, it just, it, it just made me feel terrible. And I, it, I was very sad, actually, because I do know the CEO personally, and it was just like he got the wrong advice from somebody. <laughs> it, was, it was just not the, the way you want your company to be remembered, right? So just think about that with your messages and make sure that you're, you're putting something there that lifts people. People need to be lifted now. Um, there's enough negativity going around. There really is. Right. So let's look at the number four, which is stay valuable. So value is a very interesting word. When I was taught marketing, we were taught about price and it was all about price, but the whole world has changed and now it's about giving value. So in the content that you post or in the email you send, or if you pick up the phone and just say, hi, how are you to your customer? Make sure that you're giving value. And value means people can get something out of it. Not necessarily freebies. A lot of people are going down the freebie route. I'm not a massive fan of the freebies. I think if you have a freebie, but there's an understanding, because we're all in business, guys, we need to make money. So if you have a freebie and there's an understanding that you are going to get some revenue, whether you have an upsell or something, that's fine. But just be careful of giving too many freebies because if people get used to you with freebies, it's really hard for them sometimes to switch into actually paying for you. So you do want to keep your long-term strategy in mind. But the value I mean is like my hairdresser, who's giving tips on how to look after your hair at home. The restaurant owner who maybe sends once a week recipes for cooking at home because we all have to cook now and, um, and maybe we would, you know, take away freaks before. Um, or even just links to your favorite recipes. I saw, I think Julie has got, is collecting recipes, right? Am I right, Julie? Julie? Yeah. So, you know, because we all have to figure out how to feed our families now or even ourselves, um, and it can get boring. I'm, I'm bored of cooking three meals a day for my, for my kids. I really am. Um, so, so that's really helpful. It helps me, you know. Um, if, you ho if, if your clients are homeschooling, is there something you can do? Um, you know, one of, my, one of my clients makes these amazing backpacks out of recycled water bottles. Um, and uh, so they're very much into recycling and sustainability. And what she did, well, she did for my kids, but I've told her to put it out on LinkedIn, is she, because she's so into saving the planet, she's got all these video series on, on um, how turtles think plastic is jellyfish and how they eat it. And so it's all about, you know, why we should be recycling. And so she sent those to me. And so I've been, so my kids are now very uh, sustainable. Liz, you'll be very proud of me. Um, so they're, um, you know, that my kids are getting into that. So is there something like that you can share for people homeschooling? Is there some value you can give? Because we're all in this together, right? Um, you and your clients as well. So 
giving value makes people remember you. One of my neighbors, I love living in the village here. One of my neighbors is making masks. Oh, it's downstairs now because we walked to the shops yesterday. It was quite exciting. Um, and, and she's doing it for free because she loves sewing. And it's just in her spare time, so she can't do bulk orders or anything, but she's made an offer to all of us in the village, you know, and we can tell her what we need. And I mean, what a lovely idea, right? Um, so, so give value, because I, I, love, I love her now. Her name's Corinne, and she's fantastic. And if I can, I'll support her, her other business in any way I can, right? Isn't that what it's all about? Okay. Right, number five, stay in contact. I've spoken about this a little bit, but reach out to your existing customer base. Email them, send a text message, just check in, find out how they are, tell them you miss them. <laughs> tell them you hope they're staying safe. I find stay safe is, is like a common end to all my emails now. I got a call the other day from a client and it was actually, I was very, was this homeschooling, I was having a bit of a rough day. And when I saw the name on my phone, I must admit my heart sank a little bit. And I was like, oh, more, you know, it was just, I didn't have space. And actually he's in construction. So there's nothing I can do now, other than the visibility stuff we're doing. <laughs> you know, it's construction, we, I, I can't help. <laughs> um, so my heart sank a little bit, but I answered the call like, okay, I'm ready. And he was just calling to ask how I was. It was, it was so sweet. <laughs> it was just like, I felt guilty for thinking, oh, when I saw the call. But um, that was it. And so there may be people out there who are alone, you know, people who just need to talk to someone. Just reach out, guys. It doesn't hurt anyone. And I, when I do speak to some of my clients, it's lovely. Um, you know, because it's reciprocal. You get back as well, right? But just stay in touch um, is, is my next point. Where are we now? Number six, be the why your customers are looking for. So this one's a little bit more um, theoretical, but make sure your content is aligned to what your customers' needs are during this period. As we spoke about, are they worried about homeschooling, working from home, furlough is the new buzzword, right? Um, are they worried about boosting their immune system, keeping healthy? Uh, some businesses are so aligned to this period and some are not. So you may need to rethink a little bit, adjust a little bit, um, or you may be in the right space, which is so amazing for you. Maybe they just need some motivation, hope for the future. Um, I know some people are doing um, online exercise classes. There's you know, online yoga now. There's so much people are changing and doing. Um, but make sure you can be their why. Can you talk to their current needs? Number seven is be the way your customers are. So where is always my passion, um, even when it's not lockdown time. And the where is where are they shopping, searching, reading? Is it different now? And my example is LinkedIn. So before lockdown, the best time for LinkedIn was between seven and nine in the morning. Why? Because most business people were commuting then, right? They were on the train somewhere, okay, maybe not here, but uh, London, let's talk London. They were, they were commuting somewhere. And so then they're sitting, if they're lucky enough to get a seat, on their phones. And so that for LinkedIn, that was the best time to post. Is it still now? No one's commuting, or those who are commuting are key workers, and yeah, their heads are in a completely different space, right? Um, so, what is the best time now? I find my mornings are crazy. I, I have, to, I thought it would be easy because the kids are home, but the kids are home. I have to do breakfast, and you know, and we're trying to be healthy, so I'm trying to do cook breakfast, not the cereals now. You know, reduce sugar. You know. Um, all that stuff. So that's more. And then log in. There are two different schools. Log into their school system. See what they have to do today. My son has a Skype call with his teacher. Okay, make sure that's ready. This, but my daughter's on Zoom with her teacher at nine. You know, so I find my mornings quite hectic. 
And so, and then we do Joe Wicks. I don't know if anyone's doing exercise with Joe Wicks, trying to keep the kids healthy. So we do Joe Wicks in the morning and then I start my day. So, so there may be a lot of people who will have that routine now. And therefore, if you were doing your posting seven till nine on LinkedIn before, it's not the right, it's not the right where and when anymore. <laughs> Actually, now advertising during Joe Wicks would be the right time because he's getting so many views. But it's, um, you know, but just just have a look at where and you know where they are now. It's probably changed. Um, then, oops, sorry, I've lost my stuff. No, I haven't. And are they still on LinkedIn, or are they on Facebook now? Have they moved to Instagram? Have they, you know, what are they doing now? Um, number eight is aligned, it's the when. So what time are they looking at Instagram now? Are they on, still on LinkedIn, but they're there at lunchtime? Um, and they've moved to Instagram in the evenings because they're more relaxed. Um, so why, where, and when? need to work together to give the most value to your customers. My last one's a little bit quirky. It's think of running a contest or a giveaway. And, um, and there are some lovely examples now. I think, I think Julie, you won the, the home um, revamp from Fiona, right? I did, and I'm having my office done. I'm hopefully picking up the paint today. Very exciting. Yeah, and so giving loads of publicity for her and for me. Yes. So that was a lovely idea. And I think Mark, she said you did her creative. So that was lovely. I love the, the fuchsia pink. Um, but run a little competition um, just to create some fun, some energy. Uh, it can be quizzes. Quizzes are very popular now. Um, or, or like like Fiona did, she, she's got a really hard question at the moment about which year she designed that uh, that decor. I have no clue, um, but there's just ways to be fun, and it's again about keeping the positivity, staying relevant, being top of mind. It brings it all together um, very very nicely. And we've got such great examples of all the things I've spoken about in this group right here. So um, there's, there's a lot to do. Just protect yourselves. Think about terms and conditions. Sorry, the little, little tick box in me. Um, but So you don't need a third party. You just need to understand what you need to cover yourself with. Um, but co yeah, contests, giveaways, people can't resist um, winning, right? It's, it's, it gives you those little endorphins, that, that little hit of uh, freebie drugs that we have inside us that make us feel so great. So all the so those are the nine. Um, so I'll run through summary very quickly. Um, so number one was make sure your profiles are up to date. Number two, stay visible. Make sure you're consistent. Number three, stay positive. No one likes doom and gloom. Number four, stay valuable. Make sure you're giving real value. Number five, stay in contact. Reach out to your voice. Number six, be the why your customers are looking for. Number seven, be the where your customers are. Number eight, be the when your customers are. And number nine, have some fun, run a contest or a giveaway. So all of these marketing activities can be done right now with no media costs. They do take a little bit of time to think through and plan in order to be effective. But if you do have a little bit of money, you can up your game and pay for ads or creatives or design, but it doesn't need to be. There's lots of free options available as well to just give back. So that's what I have to share today on what we can do to stay relevant and visible and appropriate to our customers during this time. Thanks, everybody. Are there any questions? Erica, fantastic. Thank you very much. I think, I think we're all winning today after that. That's um, some, such really good, valuable information there. 
Terry, I think you just got a quick point. Or it's a very quick point, and it's not a pleasant one. I'm afraid I have to go with you. And that was a brilliant foresight, Erica. Really, Thanks, really, Tim. really useful and sensible. And uh, uh, what a great meeting again. Thank you to the team. I'll give you a call later, Ali, and we'll uh, just uh, get it going for next week as well. So thanks, everyone. I'm really sorry to have to leave. All right. Thanks, Terry. Good with your launch. Hi, Terry. Can I just reiterate what um, Erica says? I keep going on about, my, about every networking I go to, about a report that I, had, I heard on Radio 4 where they had Pizza Hut and McDonald's during the last recession, or the one before that, uh, Pizza Hut continued with their marketing. They didn't stop. McDonald's did. When they came out of the recession, Pizza had 68% of the market and McDonald's had to go from, from a starting standpoint, which just goes to reiterate, you've still got to be seen. You've got to be there. You've got to be doing something. If you're not, you're going to fall off. And it'd be like starting your business all over again. It will. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. And all of those things, absolutely, we all must be doing but consistency, I think, is, is, is critical. You've got to carry on doing this stuff, especially visibility for me right now. Massively important. Absolutely. Yeah, I had a conversation with a, a client of mine who's a chiropractor, and he can't, can't function at the moment, but um, I just advised him to just, just talk to his customers and just send out a newsletter. And he's done it the other day. I saw it come out, and I thought, great, you know, he's, he's listening, and, uh, you know, it will help him in the long run. So... Thanks. Anyone it, else got any questions? It's it's not a question, but it, it's just thank you very much, Erica. It's, it was it's it's nice to have what you think you're doing to be correct. I know because Martin, you've also got some free training for people who are scared of sales, haven't you? On your website, I think it's on your website. Um, yeah, well, it's it's going to be on Facebook. Um, it's about confidence. That's okay. Yeah. It's about confidence, and you know, the more you do something, the more confident you get with it. And a lot of people think, oh, I can't. And I think, Rory, you mentioned it. Um, oh, I can't be out there talking about this, that and the other. Yes, mm. you can, because your competitors are doing it. And I know a lot of people said everything that I'm doing, I'm doing free now. And yes, I'm doing this. But there is, at the end of it, you know, I'm, it's not going to be a hard sell, but there'll be something at the end of it. And I said to this guy, you should be doing free. I'm like, well, let me just go to Tesco, fill up the car and see if they'll give me my fuel for free and my shopping. Yeah. If we don't still do business, the whole of the economy is literally going to grind to a halt. Yeah. And I just, just don't say, be well, afraid. Very quick, very quick sentence. Remember, the tail is open, but give value. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, Erica. Brilliant. I think we've got Thanks, some Erica. fantastic points there. I mean, I've made loads of notes, so I've got plenty to be getting on with. Um, I'd like to think some of it I'm practicing already, but you know, lockdown haircuts, all that sort of stuff, you know, got it, got it under control. I, I, I did, I, I have the ability to record the, the um, 10 minutes and I have actually recorded it. So if somebody would like a, a copy of it, I'm very happy to see how I can send it to you. Um, and Erica, I'll send a copy for you so that you've got it so you can put it onto your Facebook and whatever it is, if you want to. Thanks, Julie. That's lovely. Great. <laughs> wow. Even more value. Fantastic. Thank you. Right. Um, I think we're going to go straight into our...